Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, the Linux Mint 20 beta has dropped, and what we want to do is I want to walk you through it, and uh, we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at a lot of different things. There's a few minor updates. You know, we get the kernel up to 5.4, so some people might be happy about that. Finally, we have a few little minor things, and there's a couple of major items that we want to spend the most time talking about. So uh, rather than go through their their posts about about things, I just want to jump right on into the system and we're going to walk you through a series of things. So let's go ahead and get started over there. So we have booted into the very first boot of the system, and I installed this, and I did not run any updates or anything. The first thing we're going to notice if you are new to Linux Mint is that the system icons down here have changed. So rather than giving us the old traditional shield with the, uh, I'm, I don't know if we're still going to get the, the red X if it can't connect or whatever else, but rather than having the green check or the blue check, we have a notification dot over the update manager indicating that there is uh, there is an update there. Uh, instead of the big uh, triangle, which some people uh, rightly said that it looked like a, a danger or a warning, our system uh, the system report system, it now looks a little bit more, uh, or, or less, it's a lot less ominous. It's much better, much less scary looking. So over here, once again, ignore the problem with language packs, yes. And then set up system restore. So this is where they're going to ask you about system, uh, you know, system restore points with time shift and things. You can go ahead and ignore the report. As long as you do that, then you will not be nagged about doing that. Now, when we first walk into the welcome screen, we have our first steps. The first amazing change that we have is we can very quickly choose our light mode, dark mode, or accent color instantly. And this is totally awesome. So you can choose everything right in the uh, menu here. This is basically just going to change your theming around, but it works very well, consistent across the board, bringing Linux Mint up to a lot of the other uh, other systems that are friendly, uh, friendly uh, right out of the box, such as Farron OS or or Zorin with with the theming. So light mode, dark mode, and pick your color accent, which is very easy to use. Here's our system snapshots again. Our driver manager. Uh, we'll get into our update manager in a moment, and then everything else in here is going to be pretty much the same. You will notice that there is no longer the option to change back to the old traditional desktop. Now I do have a video about how to convert the uh, the form and the function back to the original, but actually Farron OS Dev has actually written a script for that and uh, we'll go ahead and have a link to that in the, in the video description and if time permits we'll look at it, but uh, I'll just kind of point you to it right now. So the update manager now, as we said, it has the little dot over it indicating that we have uh, we have some updates. So let's go ahead and click through on that. We're going to see what the updates happen to look like here. And I'm going to go ahead and run the update. So again, we still get the notification about switching to a local mirror or not. I should be on a decent mirror here, but uh, you can see there's just a couple of uh, updates here from when the system was installed last night. So here's what we're updating. There's some changes there, and let's enter our super secret password that's definitely not one, two, three. And we're going to let those update because I kind of want to look at uh, how the updates are going. You can see here now that our, our icon is a little gear indicating that it is working. And so that is, uh, that is a, a nice system. Overall, the software has not changed the uh, best that I could tell. I did have a look at LibreOffice. All of your spelling checkers, plugins, synonyms, things like that are, are working. I did not double check the version. Let's go ahead and boot this up and double check the version that we have. And uh, well, that boots up. We'll have a look at it. So I don't see anything else that's different inside of our platform here. The things that are going to be different for some of you guys are the, it now supports multiple uh, monitors, resolution sizes, uh, scaling DPIs, things like that. So a lot of other good features. We're at 6.4 LibreOffice, so a very new version of LibreOffice as well. So out of the box, it uh, is running pretty stinking good. Let's go ahead and uh, have a look at, uh, if I can remember how to get there, let's have a look at Farron's uh, install script because we're waiting for uh, changes to be made over here before we look at the next, the big parts that I really want to spend our time looking at. So over here we have, it looks like we have the latest Firefox. I can tell from the massively huge and annoying um, browser window there that, oh look, it wants to autofill me a whole bunch of spyware. Look at this, Twitter and Facebook and Reddit, you know, how exciting. Anyway, uh, we're going to go to GitHub. Has it GitHub.com forward slash 
Farron, I think. I'll go ahead and have this link. So this is another thing I don't like about Firefox. If you hit this, okay, got it, it's going to automatically enable your DNS over HTTPS. I do not recommend using that service there. So you get over here, there is the Cinnamon Boomer's Best Friend. This is actually Farron's script. So basically it's a simple script here, which is going to basically set your panel settings. So all it's gonna do is just manually change some settings that you can go down here and and do that. But if you wanted to actually run this, then just go ahead and grab the file and uh, you can you can grab the file and bash it. We'll just kind of do this poor man's way. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, open the archive manager. Throw the guy up here on the desktop, let's say, and we'll go ahead and run that script. So let's go to the desktop and there's the script. Let's go ahead and bash the script and boom, it gave us back our system error. Uh, this network notification, that's not from his script, that's from the updates, <laughs> just an FYI. <laughs> uh, I ran the updates. I, everything I want to show you today, I actually ran through a dry run last night, so I should know what I'm talking about. So now we have the more uh, traditional layout back. Let's see if this actually functions uh, the way it should. Yes, it does. So it does function the way the, the old section is. I don't like the the smaller size of the panel, but that's actually something we should be able to, to toggle pretty quickly. Let's go into our panel settings and increase this back up a little bit. That's a little bit better. All right, so if you do want that traditional panel back, then uh, definitely go over, grab uh, Farron OS's script there, which uh, will enable you to get the old form and function back if that is what you are looking for. So thanks for that Farron OS dev. All right, uh, the next thing we want to have a brief look at, there is one software that has changed, and that is the Warpinator is now installed. Now, I already have Warpinator set up on my other Arch computer here just for the purpose of testing this. So when you open up Warpinator, it's going to check for any other systems uh, on your network, and now you can click into those systems, and I can transfer files back and forth. So over here, there will be an option on Warpinator that says it's waiting for an approval. So I have to go ahead and approve the files. Or if I want to, I can go ahead and just drag a file from over there, drop it over here, and you'll see it's asking for you to wait for the approval. You have to hit the check mark, and then you will have downloaded the file. You can't drag a file off of it, but you can go ahead and open up the folder right here, and uh, you can transfer your file directly wherever you need your file transferred once that is done. So that is Warpinator, and inside the settings and preferences, you can come in here. So the things you have to make sure is that you're on the same network, and I actually did have to change my uh, network administration on VirtualBox to pay make sure that these were all on the same uh, subnet, and then you need to make sure that the group code is the same. You can have multiple computers running different codes. If you change the codes to this, then uh, the systems will, they have to have the same group code to be able to see Warpinator. So now I was able to transfer this file over, which is actually the uh, e-proof of my science fiction novel. So that's the file that I transferred over. So that's how Warpinator works. Uh, that is a new feature and a new function. So let's go ahead and get to the giant can o worms that is the snap packages. Now, as I said earlier that some people have said that Linux Mint has taken out your ability to use snap packages. That is not true. What they have done is they have blocked snap from automatically installing without your direct consent. That means that Linux Mint has actually given us choice where Ubuntu has removed our choice. And uh, that is a distinct difference. So the way that they have actually done this is they have added inside of, whoa, they have added inside of your um, apt preferences. If you lo go into your app sources and then you go into your preferences folder, they've added this no snap dot pref. So if we have a look at this, I'm going to actually go in here as a sudo. So sudo nano no snap pref. Then what this is going to do is it gives you a, an explanation. It gives you a link to the blog post as to why they did this. Now, some people have said, well, why not just package the chromium from uh, from Debian and not worry about doing this. Well, the reason is because Chromium is just the first apt package that Ubuntu has packaged, which automatically installs SnapD as dependency. 
they wanted to protect Linux Mint from future packages that chain as well. Rather than playing whack-a-mole with individual packages, it's very simple. You just disable apt, uh, excuse me, just, yeah, you disable apt from being able to install Snap altogether. They've done this exclusively by adding these three lines. Now, what they say is if you do want to install Snap, there are two ways to do it. Number one is you can, you can install the specific version of Snap. So you can do an apt policy check, see which version of Snap is available, and you can install a specific version of Snap that will enable Snap. Or if you want full Snap support, simply delete this file. Or if you don't want to delete the file, uh, you want to potentially return it back, you can just simply comment out these three lines. And if you comment out these three lines, then you will then have the ability to install SnapD, which I did test. Before we do that, I do want to talk about how to install Chromium, however, uh, because that is the one package that is seriously impacted right now. So if we boot up our software manager and uh, we go and we find Chromium, <clears throat> if I can spell Chromium, so what you'll see is we have Chromium Browser Dummy Package. And what it says here is that the dummy package can be safely removed if it's installed. Uh, the reason they're explaining this is because Snap is now required to install it. Now they could, like I said, go back and probably package the Chromium Browser from, from Debian. But there were reasons not to do that. Again, a whack-a-mole. However, I'm not sure this is the most elegant way, but they're basically saying, well, you just pretty much just have to install Chromium directly. So let's go ahead and talk about how to install Chromium on your system should you need Chromium. So we're just going to go over to chromium.org. And they do give you the full URL, which is uh, getting involved, download Chromium. The downside of, I, I, about this is that... <laughs> Chromium here, there's Google Chrome there. Just go ahead and click on your uh, your Chromium. You can install it. Uh, you can find the uh, the various packages here. This is why their site is not particularly easy to navigate. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the uh, actual URL, which is now getting involved. And download Chromium. All right. So you have a couple of ways to do this. There is actually a script. Uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through. This is gonna be a little bit more advanced. So some people might argue that, yeah, they're making it more difficult to get Chromium. I agree with that. That is a fair criticism, but let's go ahead and talk about the best way to do this. The, the easiest way, the simplest way without having to run with scripts is we're gonna start by downloading this file from Chromium here, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and uh, download it. And as soon as that's done downloading, which it's done, then we're going to open up our um, downloads folder. And it's going to give us this guy here. Now, it says Chrome Linux is what this is going to say. So we're just going to extract this file. Now, wherever you want this file to run from, the downside is this is not going to put in any update path, so you are going to have to manually update it. There is a script that will allow you to manually or to automatically update and run the system as well. That is another option. Uh, but I'm just going to show you how to get this guy running first. All right, so what we're going to do is you can run this if you're just using using a simple system user, just throw it over here. If you needed to run it on a full install, this is the exact same way that I talk about how to install Waterfox on that video system wide. So you can follow that step, but the poor man to do it, the poor man's way to do this is just drag this guy into your home directory. Now we're going to come into our menu, right click, configure our menu, open up your menu editor, and then go down to internet, add new item and then here we are going to give it a name we're going to call this chromium and then browse for your command chrome linux and chrome now this is chromium not chrome we do want an icon which they have shipped us with an icon so again hit browse uh, go back up into home chrome linux chrome logo click on the logo and now close all this down and now under internet, we will have Chromium installed. 
You can, of course, uh, because this is Linux Mint, you can, of course, go down to Internet. You can right-click, and you can add it to your panel, add it to your favorites, wherever else you'd like to do that. Now, this is where Farron Script fails you because that adds it as a shortcut on your panel over there. That seems to cause an error. Let's see if I can get Chromium on the menu down here. Let's see if I can drag it down to here. There you go. You can just drag it down as a launcher. There you go. Let's go back, and now that we have actually enabled us to do snap, now if we want to, we can still do sudo apt install snapd. And now that we have removed that file, we can now install snapd, and now we can use snapd all that we want. So we're gonna go ahead and show you why you might want to use this method as far as theming, why snap still actually do not work as well for theming is that um, the Chromium browser snap will not um, will not follow your um, system theming well. So let's do snap install Chromium. All right, so now we have actually enabled uh, the snap install and we're gonna go ahead and double check and it will not appear in our list. So let's go ahead and uh, log out and log back into the system and that should enable the menu to show up. If it doesn't, then we'll just have to reboot the whole system, but logging out, logging back in should do this tr the trick. And inside of our menu, now remember Chromium is the, this is the actual manual package and Chromium web browser is the snap package. So running this method, you actually can uh, run both of them at the same time, but we can actually see how long the snap package is taking to boot. <laughs> Thank you, snap package. All right, so what we see automatically is that our manually installed Chromium respects all of our theming and our snap package says, you did theming? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> So this is one of the, albeit I will agree, minor criticisms of uh, of the snap packages. I don't care as much about theming, but nevertheless, if I do want consistent theming, you definitely want to manually install Chrome uh, Chromium rather than installing the snap package because, hey, theming is a thing. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and close both these guys down. And let's say we get th sick of our theming and we want to go ahead and change it. Let's just go ahead and head on into our theme section. So let's say, okay, I want to go back to my my more traditional, uh, let's see, there we go. I want to go back to my more traditional, actually, I think we can just do it over here too, right? There we are. Now we want to go back to this guy. Let's go ahead and boot up both of our Chrome is again, wow, I'm not sure why I'd want to run this theming, but in the event I do, now we can see this guy here matches our theming, this guy here does not. And that is one of your advantages of running your direct packages rather than your snaps. Uh, albeit, I agree that that is a minor theming. So there we have it. Linux Mint has not killed your ability to remove snaps. What they have done, though, is they have prevented apt and other Ubuntu packages from automatically installing snaps should you want to. Uh, but do you want to do that? I showed you in this video how you can uh, fix that and go back. So there is basically the odds and the ends of the uh, of the uh, new Linux Mint 20. So again, I'll have the link to the script. I'll go ahead and have the direct link to the Chromium web browser down there as well if you want to do that uh, manually install it. And uh, I'll go ahead and put the instructions down there as to how to enable Snap should you want Snaps to be enabled on Linux Mint 20. And I just, I like the approach that they did here because they're not saying you can't use it. They're simply saying it's, Ubuntu's not going to be able to force it on you if uh, you don't want to. So I really stand behind what Linux Mint has done here. And I think that Linux Mint 20 just, it's looking so far, it's looking really good, even for a beta. So uh, with that, let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments down below.